So now we are in lesson 9.7. It's nine planes and angles. <clears throat> it's a very easy lesson. It's all about calculation. First of all, we need to know how do we find the position of a line and a plane. So to find the position of a line and a plane, we have different cases. Either the line can be parallel or included or it intercepts the plane. If the line, how do I know if the line is parallel to the plane? I have two methods. Either I solve the system and I will reach to a situation that is no solution or is it an example, or I will compare the vector director of the line and the plane. And the, and the norm of the plane. If the vector director is perpendicular to the normal and there is no common point, I wrote here no common point between the line and the plane, it means the, it's parallel. But if I want to see if the line uh, is included in the plane, it's all of it in the plane. Or I solve the system and I see that the system has infinitely many solutions. Or if I compare the vector director and the normal, they are perpendicular, but there is a common point between the line and the plane. So if the vector director and the norm are perpendicular and there is a common point, so the line cannot be parallel, so it's sure included in the plane. And the last case, uh, the line intersects the plane at one point. In this case, when I solve the system, it has a unique solution. Let's do this example. It's from the book. If you have this plane and I have three lines, <coughs> identify which of the lines is in the plane parallel to the plane or intersecting the plane at the point and find the coordinates of the plane. First, if I want to find, if I want to solve the solution, the system, I need to change the equation of the line as, as a parametric equation. So you write it equal, for example, to lambda, and then you find x. x will be, <coughs> if you cross multiply, 2 lambda minus 1, y will be minus lambda plus 3, and z will be 3 lambda minus 2, and then I solve the system. <clears throat> so this is the line. Now I need to replace x, y, and z in terms of lambda in the equation of the plane here, and I need to solve. If I reach to any situation like here, I, I reach to 3 equal to 3, what does it mean? It's true for all value of lambda. What does it mean that the line is in the plane? If you reach, for example, here to equal 3, it means parallel. Lambda equal to 3, it means there is a <clears throat> Sorry, guys, an intersection. You could also, guys, compare, look at the vector director and the normal. It's uh, Here it's 2, uh, 1, uh, minus 1, and here it's 2, minus 1, 3. You could compare and you see that the, um, the uh, if, if I do the dot product, it's equal to 0, and then I check if there is a point that is no common point, so it means it's parallel. I move to the second line, I did the same thing, equal to lambda here, and then I cross multiply to write it x equal lambda plus 2, the same thing, exactly the same, and then I did the substitution, I replaced x, y, and z in the plane, I got lambda is equal to 2, it means there is a unique solution, and how do we find the solution? I just replaced lambda here, 2 plus 2, 4, 4, and 9, so there is an intersection, and the intersection is 4, 4, 9. And the last one, L3, when I replace, I will reach to a, a wrong answer. So it means there is no intersection, no solution. It means the line is parallel. Now I will move. I think I said something wrong here. Uh, here I said, uh, you will see that there is, um, when I was doing here to check with the uh, vectors, dot product is equal to zero, and there is a common point, so that's why it's included. <clears throat> I was talking about the case uh, where it's parallel. Now, second case, angle between the two planes. To find the angle between two planes, it is the angle between the normal, so it's very easy. So I, I look at the planes, for example, here I have those two planes. What is the normal here? It's 1, 2, minus 1. The second normal is 2, minus 3, minus 6. How do we find the uh, normal? We do the dot product. We know that the dot product, if I want to write the formula, it's magnitude of N1 times, this is n, magnitude of n2 times the cosine theta. But what I, why I took here the absolute value of the dot product, because I want to, the dot product to be positive. I want the cosine to be positive, because if the cosine is negative, you know that's from chapter 10, it means that in, in quadrant 2. Quadrant 2, it means the angle is um, uh, obtuse, it's not acute angle. But ne ne I need to find the acute angle between the 
the two planes. So that's why I took the absolute value of the dot product to have a positive answer. And then I used just my calculator. The dot product is x, x prime plus y, y prime plus delta prime over the magnitude. And then we'll have the answer in radian. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice. Now, how do you find the angle between two non-parallel lines? Also, it is the angle between the vector director of the lines because each line is defined by its vector director. So, this is the vector director. This is the other vector director. Again, I want to take the absolute value of the dot product because I want the acute angle. I don't want this angle, the obtuse angle. So, that's why... We, the, we take all the time the cosine positive to be in quadrant one. So I take the, the how do we find the vector director? It's 3, 4, 12. Here it's 2, 1, uh, minus 1, and minus 2. And then I will, uh, how you find it, guys? If you don't remember, you put equal lambda, and then you see the coefficient of lambda. Okay? Then you do the dot product. I use the formula, and then I will get the angle. The last case, this one is the most complicated one. <clears throat> so how do we find the angle between a line and the plane? First of all, the line can't be parallel or included in the plane. If it's parallel or included, I cannot find the angle because we know that the angle means it's zero. Now, I have two methods. We took one method in uh, chapter six, so in chapter six, the angle between the line and its uh, and the plane. It is the angle between the line and its orthogonal projection on the plane. So if I have a line and do the orthogonal projection, this angle here will be the angle between the two, the line and the plane. So in this case, if I need to do that, I need three points. Three points should, should I should have. I need to have the intersection between the line and the plane. I need to have the orthogonal projection of any point on the line on the plane. And then in this case, I can have, for example, here two vectors. I do the dot product to find the angle and I found the cosine or I can do the dot product of this vector with the vector director it's the same the method two it's easier it's the angle between the vector director of the line and the normal of the plane but I need to be careful that because this is the vector director and this is going to be the normal when I do the dot product I will get this angle but it's not this angle that I need I need this one here so it's the complementary of the angle by the dot product. So when I do the dot product, you will get this angle here. To find the real angle between the line and the plane, you do uh, 90 minus theta to find the angle between the line and the plane. Let's do the last example. <clears throat> I have this line and I have this plane. First question is find the point of intersection between the line and the plane. To be able to find the uh, intersection, I need to find lambda. So what, what I can do here, you can, this line, you write it equal to lambda, and then I cross multiply, it's going to be x. x is equal to lambda minus 3. y is equal 4 lambda plus 5, and z is equal to 2 over 3 lambda minus 1. You can see here, this is the vector that, did you see it, guys? 2, 4, 2 over 3, this is the vector director of the line. I don't want to make a mess. And now, this is the line. All what we need to do is we replace it in the plane to get lambda. And once I have lambda 3, I replace it back here to find the intersection of the line and the plane. Why do I need that? Because if this is my plane, okay, and this is the line, excellent. First of all, I said, okay, I need this point. I need now the orthogonal projection. So what's still missing? I still need a point here that I will name it A. And I still need the point, this point here, I will name it F. And then w once I have, um, I, I, I found it, I will be able to do the dot product of those two vectors or even this one and the vector director to find the angle between the line and the plane. <clears throat> now, they know it. now, method one, first you need to pick any point on the line. How do we pick any point on the line? Let's go back to the line. This is my line. If I take lambda 0, the easiest value, I will have minus 3, 5 minus 1 is a point on the line. Excellent. And now, I need to find the equation of the line passing through A and perpendicular to the plane because this one will help me to find F, the orthogonal projection of the point on the plane. So to find the equation of the line, that is uh, perpendicular to the plane, it's very easy. I know that if you take let M be a point on the plane, you know that 
m a is equal to lambda n the times the normal because the normal is collinear to the this line here and the normal i know it it's 5 minus 1 4 and then i just do the equation so i will have x is equal to 5 lambda plus minus 3 plus the x of a and plus 5 and minus 1 you know this from the preceding chapter so now this is the equation of the line passing through a and perpetrating into the plane what I really need to focus on to find this point here, because once I have it, I will get this vector and this vector, even this vector and the vector director, and I will get the angle. So to find the point F, so now I need to find the intersection of this line with the plane. So again, I will replace X, Y, and Z in the equation of the plane here, and this will help me to find lambda. Once I have it, I can find the coordinate of F. Now I'm safe. I can get the vector PF by using the formula x of f minus x of p, y of f minus y of p, z of f minus z of p. And then you can use with the pf either the vector pa or the vector director of the line, as you like. And now you do the dot product, and you find the cosine of the angle. The, the vector director, I have a 2, 4, 2 over 3. It's written here. Now I can do the dot product, and then it will give me cosine is equal. Again, I took the absolute value because I need the angle to be acute, and then I will get... <clears throat> the angle method two it's faster and easier but we need to be careful that it's the uh, complement angle so i have the normal see the normal and i have the vector director if i do the dot product of those two vectors the angle that i will get is this one here okay i will get this angle here but it's not this angle that i need the angle between the lines and the plane it's this angle here this one here that i need this one that i really need so what I do after I do the dot product, again, I take the absolute value because I need it positive. The angle, I took it in degree, it's 72.7. So the real angle between the line and the plane, this one that I need, it's 90 minus 72.79. It's 17.2 degrees and it's 0 0.300 radian. It's exactly the same like this answer here. Guys, don't worry, we'll do more application in the class. It's just about calculation in this lesson. And see you in the next.